We car enthusiasts dream of one day having a very well-built garage. Whilst this is not my ultimate setup, I now have the liberty to build a partial dream garage. Here is how I transformed my regular garage into a showroom style dream garage. So the first thing I did was pull out everything from the garage. We also had holes all over the garage and I honestly missed a couple, but I filled whatever I could find. We had everything stored on this one shelf that I found in the trash. So we just put everything in bins. We had a big hole here, I guess from the previous tenant that they crashed into the wall. So I made a cut and repaired it. We continue on taking out all the trash that we currently had as well as blowing away any loose debris we also blew away some spider webs that were up on the corners of the ceilings this garage was extremely dirty and it was very much needed to do a very good spring cleaning we then pressure washed the floor because we knew that we were going to paint over that way it didn't bleed through any of the tiles that we're going to be laying down in the future we began spray painting the walls i spoke to my neighbors and he said that we're pretty much crazy for painting the walls black and at first i thought it was crazy but hey i think it's going to come out pretty good so we were doing a combination of spray paint and back rolling. It took a while to get used to it, but I think we got the hang of it after a while. We did waste a lot of paint trying to figure out how to make this work the most efficient way. We will say that it was kind of difficult to get 100% coverage with the black paint over the white. I'm not sure if it was because of, you know, the two complete opposite colors or just our technique sucks, but I think it's coming out pretty good with both spraying and then back rolling. And of course, this is Florida, so it ain't Florida unless it's raining all the time. Most of my stuff outside kind of got wet, so we had to rush to bring stuff inside. As you can see here, we were trying to cover up the garage door. That way we can paint the door as well. But at the end of the day, I changed my mind. Over here, I was using light. That way I can see any missed spots. That way I can continue on spray painting. So far, it's looking pretty good. I started to sweep any of the debris from the paint that fell onto the floor. So I swept, blow dried any loose debris, and I did a final touch with mopping. So I started doing the edges of the garage floor. That way I can lay over some one part epoxy primer. I think this is going to help the aesthetics. That way, when you're looking at the tiles, it all looks uniform instead of some gray and white patches underneath. I did a total of two coats for the floor and the next day I started adding the tiles. I didn't order all the tiles, I just ordered a few so I can see if I really am gonna like this one. And at the end of the day, I did like it. So I started putting the tiles over on the side that I'm gonna lay the cabinets, trying to think ahead. But at the end of the day, I probably messed myself up because I had to pull everything out once again. When trying to mount the cabinets, we realized that we have one of those cement ledges and if we were going to lay it on the ground, we were going to have a gap between the cabinet and the wall, which that would not work unless we put a two by four across the wall to mount the cabinets. I wanted more of a clean look, so I decided to lay over the ledge. In order to lay over the ledge, we had to pull that floorboard trimming out. So I did that, laid it on top and mounted it onto the wall. Another obstacle that I had was that my entire house is framed with metal studs. Luckily, this one part of the wall does in fact have wood studs behind the wall that was a plus for us over here we got the workbench and we put it in this location we were trying to figure out what's the best way to do this and at the end of the day we also decided to add a couple more cabinets that way we can put the workbench over top of the two lower cabinets so it's very important to have good lighting especially in an all black garage the current light fixture that i had wasn't cutting it so i decided to purchase some led lights i wanted to do arrows but then i later decided that it wasn't so appealing to me and it was going to require a lot of individual wiring for each of the arrows i ordered some more leds that way i can make a hexagon and i know that's kind of more of the cliche thing everybody has has hexagon lights but at the end of the day it does look really really good i received the rest of my tiles so i started laying them down and as you can see here i'm going for a nismo inspired garage and these old school nismo stripes really give a nice touch to the garage it's going to provide a nice home for my nissan z this is the part where i said i pretty much laid the other tiles un underneath the cabinets for no reason because i had to redo everything since i started over from 
the left hand side of the garage. My Husky cabinet ended up coming into the Home Depot. I didn't get it shipped to the house so I can save myself $150. So I just rented a truck of theirs for $19 and i transported the toolbox by myself it was pretty heavy you know luckily me and my fiance were able to do it and safely so yeah i assembled the toolbox and rolled it to the corner where it's going to rest and of course something bad really happens again this is my first cabinet came damaged and now this one i am not keeping this i don't know what it is they always come damaged oh i'm gonna be waiting for that I purchased another small cabinet. That way I could put this workbench in between both tall cabinets. So I wanna keep basically everything on that side of the garage. With most of my cabinets, we were able to start putting things away. The hexagon lighting wasn't a pain. If you weren't paying attention to what you were doing, it, I can see it becoming a hassle. We got the first hexagon put together. Now I wired it up, just some jank it right now. I will obviously put some wire nuts or crimp them together here shortly but this is just to test oh yeah baby so i'm going to continue on putting them together testing each section that way if one is out i can replace it and not have to worry about that light being faulty while i'm installing i did this entire lighting thing by myself it could be a one-man job but it's obviously a lot easier if you have two all right so so far this is how it's coming out may have miscalculated this i was supposed to fit another hexagon pattern grid on that end of the wall this is pretty much the obstacle that i'm trying to get around and with that being shorter this was supposed to stop here so i'm at a crossroads whether or not to just use the rest of this to continue on this way and that way and i believe that's what i'm gonna do it might look a little odd with these a little longer than the center, but I might as well use the real estate and the lights that I currently have. So this is my 100,000 lumen lamp. It's very, very bright, but the thing is that it's concentrated in that one area. Now I'm gonna show you the hexagon lights. There's so much light in here. I am extremely happy how this came out. Even with this mishap here where I miscalculated, it still came out pretty good. So I ended up using another one here, another one there, and I brought some this way and same for here. So I about used everything. I have one more light bar left. I'll use that as a spare. And this is the way I wired it. I butt spliced into an extension cord and I bought that little lamp fixture that has an outlet on it. And all I have to do is just paint that black and that's it. So far it has not tripped. Although, you know, they did tell me when I asked them how to wire it, they said to wire it in three different locations. All right, so we have the final cabinet for the garage. Let's hope this one does not come damaged. The moment of truth. God, bro, again. I mean, I don't know what to think of these people. Third cabinet, damaged. Dude. There's a huge, like, dent thing here. At this point, I'm extremely upset and I've decided to just live with the damage and I'll end up drilling holes on the backside and trying to pull out any of the dents that are currently in the toolbox. But enough talking, let's go ahead and show you the final outcome.